Hey there, welcome to the Agents of Revival podcast. If you're ready to be healed and take full accountability of your life by evolving into your best self, then this is the podcast for you. I am your host, Andrea Griffin Rogers, and I'll share with you winning steps as well as personal tips and anecdotes on how to go from brokenness to wholeness and from scattered pieces to inner peace. So come on in and join me on this healing journey and let's become whole together. Enjoy it. Hey guys, what's up? How are you today? I pray all is well. This message stirs your faith, falls on good ground, produces good fruit in your lives. Today, we're still in the vision series. If you're new to the podcast or you're new to the season, we have started a new series called Vision. And in this series, we want to talk about so many different topics that correlate with vision But I want to help you identify key points such as clarity on the vision, understanding your vision, how to operate in your vision, the right team needed to see your vision grow, and how to show up and execute your vision properly, effectively, and efficiently. And so make sure you're tuning in every day so that you can get these tips and tidbits that I'm going to give you. And of course, you know I got to drop some anecdotes your way about how I have come to learn um, what I know and, and I'm sharing it with you. And so today we're going to talk about adaptation is required for elevation. And I know yesterday we kind of hit a little bit on um, adaptation in terms of adaptive flow. But today we're going to dive um, a little bit deeper into why you need to adapt um, and, and how it correlates or corresponds to that thing you want to get to what you're praying for what you're hoping for what you're believing for that goal that you've written down and hoping to achieve and strive um, to become that like all of it ties into adaptation because we live in a world today where things are changing and they're changing fast and they're changing rapidly and I know change can be uncomfortable but it's for a purpose And we may not understand at the time while things are changing, because when you think about change, change can be tedious. It can be it takes work. It takes diligence. It takes discipline. It takes intentionality. And in all of that process, which people think is a dirty word process, is uncomfortable. You cannot be in a place of comfort and think things are going to change. No, change comes to shake things up. And so how do you address the shakeup in your life? How do you address when things are changing and shifting in your life, in your family, in your community? You change by adapting. And how do you adapt? It's based on how you choose to show up in this new way and how you are intentional about learning something new. Because part of adaptation, you got to learn something new. You don't just exist in a changed environment and think that, okay, well, the way you have been existing thus far is going to sustain you. No, because something's going to give. Either the environment that's changing around you is going to unfortunately conform back to the norm that you're comfortable with, or you are going to be bucking back or in a sense fighting back against the change. And so... We have to learn how to operate in an adaptive flow. Adaptation is required. It's a necessity every day. Every person under the sound of my voice needs adaptation in their life to some degree of capacity. You cannot operate in the way you have been. We're in a new year. And I know some of you may think like, oh, well, it's just a new year. It is no different than last year. No, don't go into 2024 with that same mindset. And I know it's so easy to get stuck in that rut thinking that things will never change. I've experienced it. But you got to fight that devil. You got to fight that negative stinking thinking that says it's going to always be this way. I'm going to always suffer with this pain or this sickness or this disease. I'm going to always have lack. I'm going to always not see my dreams come to pass. I'm going to always be single. I'm going to always be a divorcee. Whatever your thing is, I'm going to always be suffering. No, you're not. Change your mind. When it comes to repentance, repentance means a changed mind, which will then change your heart posture. But it is an about face. It's turning away from things that are going one way and choosing to go a different way. 
that ties into your thinking, choosing to change it from one way of thinking to something different. And so adaptation is required. And and I've learned this in my life time and time again, which is why I'm here to teach it to you, because I have been in several different changes in my life, changes of environment, changes of social economic groups, changes of finances, changes of friends, changes of uh, family dynamics and relationships. I've had change. My entire life has been about changing and evolving and growing. And sometimes, as I talked about before, if you missed that message, go listen to it of the dodgeball of life. Sometimes when those dodgeballs hit you, it can knock you down and it can hit you hard, baby. And when it hits you hard, you feel like there's no way I can survive this storm. There's no way I can survive this thing. It, it left such a deep bruise that I'm not sure I can get back up. But I'm here to tell you today because I've gotten back up several times that I promise you, you can get back up. It may feel like you've fallen too deep in the pit, but I'm here to tell you on behalf of somebody I'll talk about a little bit later, Joseph and myself, you can get out that pit. You can get back up, but it's going to take intentionality of your mind. You got to shift your mind to adapt to where you are and focus on where you want to go. And you're going to see that change manifest in your life. And it's a slow change. It's a slow process. It's not going to be an overnight thing. And a lot of times people think because we live in a microwave society where everything is just quick fix, Instagrammable, quick filter, microwave it, put it in the microwave, and it's a done meal. No, it's going to take some old-fashioned cooking from scratch work, okay? (laughs) It's going to take you rolling your sleeves up and getting your hands dirty. But you can make it. It's all about discipline and intentionality. And so in my life, um, you know, I'll use the example I use from the dodgeball. So in that particular um, episode, I talked about a particular dodgeball that hit me that I was not expecting. And when it hit me, I had two choices. I could either sit here and wallow in this pain that I'm in from this dodgeball hitting me and I wasn't expecting the hit. Or I can decide to get back up and fight back. And I chose both. (laughs) I'm going to be honest. (laughs) You know, so when it first happened, I had to sit in that thing. I had to deal with that pain because I was trying to, you know, tell myself that it wasn't there as we all do. And so understand this. When I'm teaching you guys something, it's not because I just read it in a book. I lived it. I experienced it and I grew from it. And so I had to deal with that pain because it stung. It didn't just sting as well. It left a mark. And I had to realize, oh, I'm a little bit more bruised than I thought. And so I had to deal with that. I had to wallow in that frustration, wallow in that disappointment, wallow in even my own, you know, shortcomings. You know, because sometimes we want to beat ourselves up and feel like, why didn't I see that dodgeball coming? My way. But when life is happening, sometimes you may miss the dodgeball that's coming because it may have came at an angle that you were least expecting, which happened to me. And so I had to deal with my pain. I had to deal with my emotions in that moment. And when I say that moment, it doesn't necessarily mean in a minute. It means that however that moment lingered. So for me, just like for you, it it may have been, um, you know, a few hours. Some may be a few days. It depends on like what it was that hurt you, that knocked you down, that kind of, you know, caught you by surprise and you weren't expecting it. And so for me, it was a couple hours. Like I had to just keep going back and forth over like what happened? What could I have done differently? How could I have shown up differently? Um, How could I have not seen the signs that the dodgeball was coming? And how could I have dodged it better? And, you know, you go through all those emotions. And then I had to get back up and fight because I realized I can't stay stuck here. Like staying stuck here is, is serving me no good. Staying stuck here, wallowing over the changes I could have made, ain't changing what happened, (laughs) you know? And and that's the thing about a mindset shift that needs to come into your life when it comes to adaptation. If you want to move forward, you got to realize I can't change what happened. I can deal with the emotions of how it affected me. Yes, but I can't change the outcome. It happened. And so needless to say, kind of, oh, well, and it doesn't mean that it's well, like it was okay what somebody did to you. No, it just means you get to a point of accepting that it happened, 
that there's no amount of thoughts you can think of that can change the outcome because it's already happened. It's past tense. And so now you can move forward focusing on what you learned from the experience and how to apply it to the next situation, the next circumstance, the next friendship, the next relationship, to the next, the next job even, so that you don't find yourself having to learn that lesson again. And that's what I did. I got back up and I chose to keep fighting. I adapted to my environment. I adapted to my circumstances. I realized that I could not change what happened. But what I can do is take the lesson learned and apply it moving forward. And I've been doing that. And you can do the same thing. And so whatever it is in your life that you are praying for, that you are hoping to get to, to attain to, you can make it, you can get there, but it's going to take a mind shift. You got to change your mind of wallowing in what happened. You got to change your mind on being bitter about it as well, because that's a real thing that's a real feeling when you are thinking about what happened and on all of the variables and scenarios you're going down the list just replaying it over and over again in your head you can start to become bitter you can start to become aggravated and and frustrated at what happened or who did what and and how they should have done you differently and whatnot but that's no that's serving you no purpose all it's doing is keeping you stuck in that bondage keeping you shackled to what happened to you. And it also allows that person to have power and authority over you because it lets them win. The best way you can get somebody back is not about getting them back in terms of revenge. It's about changing your mind and bettering yourself because that's the best way to see vindication in your life because they're going to see that what they did to you or how they tried to stop you or how they tried to hurt you didn't affect you. And that's how you take your power back. And that's what I had to do. I had to realize that, you know what? I'm not going to let this person stop me or these people stop me from what I set out to do. I have a goal. God is backing my goal. And so I'm focused on getting up out of here. I'm focusing on doing what I need to do to keep moving forward. I acknowledge the pain I was in. I acknowledge the fact that that dodgeball knocked me out a little bit. So I acknowledge my pain. I didn't hide it. Because a lot of times people want to hide the fact that what happened to them hurt them. Don't hide it. Be honest with yourself. I didn't say go to that person. Be honest with yourself and with God to say, that hurt. I'm really upset that that happened to me. And then after that, then come up with a plan. A plan of action. Okay, this hurt. But the first step of the plan of action should be, what did I learn? What did I learn from this experience? And don't let it be negative because a lot of people think what I learned was not to trust nobody. No, 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 no. Because now you're putting up walls of offenses. And I talked about yesterday, like you got to let go of offenses and expectations quickly. So we're not going to do that. We're going to say, okay, this situation happened. But what was some things I learned? And part of what you learned is taking ownership of your involvement. Yeah, you're going to have to put your big boy drawers on and your big girl panties on and take ownership for what went wrong on your part. Because you can't change somebody else. And you may say, okay, well, give me an example, Andrea, because I don't understand what you mean. All right, I'm glad you asked me. I'm going to break it down for you. So something that we all have experienced, so I'm going to give this example, relationships. Yep, let's talk about it. (laughs) Relationships. We all have had a significant other, whatever your, whatever floats your boat, significant other. And with that particular person, the relationship went sour and and y'all broke up. And the first thought that normally comes to people's minds is, them 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 let me point the finger at them and how they were wrong what they did and they did this and they did that and they said this and they said that and they were you know slimy or grimy or shady or whatever adjective that's that culture puts out there that you want to use and you want to just keep pointing the finger at them but maturity says what was my part what that played in this what is my involvement in this and a lot of times we have to look at the fact that was this really the right person for you anyway? 
Hmm. Yeah, you're going to have to look in the mirror and check that man or that woman in the mirror and say, you know what? There were red flags when you first met them and you overlooked it. You ignored it. You wanted to, as people say, get a benefit of the doubt. But one thing that I've been learning about that is don't, don't ignore discernment. Because that discernment, that conscious speaking in your body, that um, gut feeling that you're receiving about somebody is not out of 10 accurate. And so you'll go in thinking that, well, you know what? This person may be different, but you know, every red flag is showing you that they are exactly the same as another relationship that you had, or they are not good for you. And let me just give a disclaimer really quickly, because I feel like I have to, I feel like somebody's like, oh, see, yep, mm -mm." you can only do that from a place of being healed. Because if you're not a place of being healed from your past, then you will have somebody come into your life that may be somebody that's good for you. And you'll immediately, before they even open their mouth, before they even walk up to you, say, they going to treat me like everybody else. Because your, your, your stance is from a broken place. Your stance is from a place of not being healed from a past relationship. So we don't want to do that. But I'm saying when you know that you have fully forgiven and healed from address the issues of the last relationships and fully healed by acknowledging your own faults, as well as acknowledging and, and accepting the fact that whatever happened with that person happened with that person. Then you can move forward. And so, like I said, it may be that the person coming to you may be good for you, but it also could be somebody who's not good for you. And only when you're at a place of being healed, can you recognize the discernment that's speaking to you that says that's not for you. And another part of being healed is identifying your why. Like, why do you want this relationship? Because some people are trying to fill a void. You don't like being alone. You don't like being single. You feel lonely. And so the first person that walks up to you or the second person that walks up to you, you're like, okay, bet I'm a start a relationship with them. And then you find yourself repeating the cycle over and over and over again. And then wondering, how do I get back here? This seems like the same person that was the last person that was the last person, but a different face and a different name. It's because you have not dealt with you first. There's areas in your heart that you are not addressing, that you're not willing to heal from. And so there's a thirst, there's a need, there's a crave inside of you that soon as you see something you like, you go on right after it. Instead of stopping to pause and wait and see, do I really, why do I really want this? Am I trying to fill a need? Because if I'm trying to fill a need, then not, then this not, this not the person for me. And the reason why I say that is because even if it is a good person, don't be needy because that's not healthy for either person. And so if there's a need in your life and you expect that person to fill that void, they're not going to fill it and they're going to disappoint you every time because you are pushing your own internal needs externally out onto others. And you can't do that. And so when it comes to relationships, the best way to adapt in order to move forward and have a healthy relationship is to deal with you first, heal from within, and then address moving forward of the past relationships that you were in to identify where was the wrong. It's not just on that person because there were probably red flags, red signs that you picked up on and you ignored or somebody else that's close to you that loves you picked up on it and you ignored them saying, Hey, I don't think that person's for you. Hey, you, you're looking at that through rose colored glasses. You're not really seeing that clearly. You're not, your vision is a little blurred right now. Cause you got the, you know, that infatuation, that full lovey dovey feeling, and you're not really seeing this person clearly. And so we got to take ownership for when we have, allowed ourselves to be in relationships that we knew were not right for us. You can't keep putting the blame on them and saying, well, if they just changed, if they would have did this differently, no, 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 no. You got to, you can only work on yourself and change yourself. And so you got to look at yourself. Were there red flags there? 
that you knew it was not right for you? Were there red flags there that other people pointed out to you that that person was not right for you and you still went forward? You got to take ownership for your own hurt. Because granted, you could say, well, that person could have treated me better. And yes, that's true. But you also could have treated your own self better by guarding your heart before freely giving it to somebody else who did not prove if they were worthy to receive it. Mm. And I ain't even about to go into that because I feel like I'm about to go into tandem with that. And let, let's just not do that. Let's, let's pull back, pull back, pull back. Adaptation is required for elevation. So when it comes to moving forward, like in terms of relationships, since we're using the example, and you know that you eventually want to be married, you know that you eventually want that companionship, then how you adapt is based on how you're willing to heal. If you're willing to do the work of healing first, then you can move forward in a better way. That means you can adapt to this relationship, this new relationship that comes in because you've addressed the areas that needed to grow in you and out of you from your past. Yeah, change is messy. It ain't a darn thing you can do about it. But roll your sleeves up and get the work in. Because if you want that thing, that elevation that you want, that job opportunity that you want, you may have to unlearn some things. Actually, I'm not even going to say you may have to. You will have to unlearn some things on one level that you learned thus far. Because it got you to that point, but it will not take you any further. I know because I'm dealing with my own life. I've had to step into roles and responsibilities that was never part of my plan. It was part of God's plan, but it wasn't part of my plan. And in that, I've had to adapt. I've had to unlearn some things and relearn some things. I've had to, you know, roll my sleeves up and get dirty. I've had to make some mistakes. And then in those making mistakes, I've had to identify, okay, what did I learn? And then how do I apply what I learned moving forward? Not applying what I learned in a negative way because I'm bitter and I'm hurt and I'm upset and I'm frustrated and I'm offended by what they did. No, 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 no. Let me take what I learned. You know what? There was that sign. Oh, you know what? I didn't like how they talked to me there. And so how can I speak up for myself if I didn't speak up for myself? How can I... um? How can I discern if this is the person that I should have in my life anyway? Was I not listening when my gut feeling was saying that this wasn't the person for me? And then how can I do better at listening to that gut feeling? All of it is adaptation. You can apply this to if it's a business deal that's on the table. If you're an entrepreneur, or you're a artist or something, and you're like, oh, I really want this deal. Okay, hold on. Let's pause for a minute here. And let's think. You can think yourself better. You can think yourself rich. You can think yourself to elevation. It's all about changing your thought. Changing the way you think. Turning away from the way something once was to what you want it to be. What I mean by that? I mean that tying into neediness, as I said before. If you're needy for something, then chances are you're you're about to make the wrong decision. Because you are thirsty for it. You want it too bad. And it's okay to want something. But want it with the right vision. Being able to see it clearly. Because if you're too thirsty for it. Chances are people will take advantage of that thirstiness. And so how do you take your power back and adapt? Is why do I want this? What is my end goal for this? Am I wanting this because I'm trying to fill a void of something that's missing? And if I am trying to fill a void of something that's missing, then let me address that area of what's missing first before I try to move forward and pursue the thing that I think I want. Because a lot of times what you think you want may not even be what you wanted. It's just something that you wanted to fill the void at that time. You know, I'll give you another example. Sometimes you could be hungry. And not realize you're hungry. And so you'll see a snack, whatever the snack is. And you're like, well, like whatever your favorite snack is. And you're like, ooh. Now, for me, it's popcorn. So I'm like, ooh, I want some popcorn. And I'll eat some popcorn. 
and I'll keep eating some popcorn and eating some popcorn. Before you know it, like I done popped all these kernels and, and ate all these kernels, or if it's a bag of popcorn or something, I done ate the whole bag. Now, sometimes, and I'm gonna be honest, sometimes I didn't ate that bag of popcorn, or I I don't really use bag of popcorn. I actually use kernels, so I'll do like a half a cup. Oh, I mean not a half a cup, a quarter cup measurement of some kernels, and I'll pop that and I'll eat that. And then I'll be like, you know, I want some more popcorn. Well, I'm feeding a need, but not addressing the need. The need is that I'm hungry. But because I'm ignoring the fact that I'm actually really hungry for food that's going to bring more sustenance, I'm just filling it with popcorn. So, yeah, it ties me over, but it still didn't really fill the void that was there of you're actually hungry. And so then I go and I'll pop some more popcorn. And then by the time I may finish eating the next popcorn, then it's like, okay, now I'm full. But I just filled myself up on what they would say is like empty calories. When the entire time I really wanted a meal. So we got to look at what is it that I'm actually needing? And is it something that I need to address to fill the void? Versus me just going after what I want because I want it. Why do I want it? Your, your why is important. You have to understand and hold on to your why. Where there is no vision, the people perish. But he that keepeth the law, happy is he. Another version says, when people do not accept divine guidance, they run wild. But whoever obeys the law is joyful. You have to decide today to receive guidance. Because wisdom is the only thing that's going to help you move forward and adapt. Because otherwise, you'll change in an environment that you thought you needed to change for and it didn't serve you any purpose. Another example would be people who get in relationships and they change everything of who they genuinely are at the core of them to please that person that they wanted so badly to be with. All the while you're miserable, all the while you're bitter, All the while you're desiring that they will change or they will allow you to really be who you are. And then you're never happy. You're never satisfied. Because you have given your power externally when it's supposed to be internally. I heard a married couple, because this will be for marriages as well. I heard a married couple give their testimony of this. And they've been married for about, I think at this point, like 13 or 14 years. But 10 years into the marriage, the husband finally said, listen, I am tired of being who I'm not. Now, the wife is like, what you talk about? What you talking about, Willis? What you, what you mean? And he says, listen, I don't like this. I don't like that. I actually don't really like dressing like this, but I only dress this way because I know it's what you want. But I don't like to dress this way. I don't like to go there. I know you like to go there, but I really don't like to go there. And it became this like big, they laugh about it now, which is why I'm laughing, but it's funny to hear them talk about it. It became this big undoing and the wife is sitting there flabbergasted. Her jaw is dropped to the floor of like, what? All this time. I thought you liked this and you were adapting to our marriage in a healthy way and and you weren't. And, And the person and the husband was like, no, I just became who I thought you wanted me to be. I just did what I thought you wanted to make you happy, even though it was making me miserable. And so when it comes to adaptation, you got to adapt in a healthy way that's going to be good for you to show up as your best self. Because if you adapt in a unhealthy way like this particular couple did, you'll wind up years into it miserable because it was never what you really desired. But it filled a void in a moment and you just ignored your own feelings. You ignored the, the real area that needed to be taken care of. Like the example of the popcorn and food. And so you can't do that. You got to be willing to change the environment or the environment will change you. 
And sometimes the environment can change you for the best. Other times the environment can change you for the worst. But you have to be willing to adapt to any environment that you are in. I'm going to give you these three key points before I go. Because we are out of time. And I had so much more I wanted to give y'all. But you just got to (laughs) wait. But I will give you these three key points. Number one, identify the areas you need to change, shift, or adjust in. Take a moment or two to think and analyze these five questions I'm going to give you. And if you need to pause this podcast for a moment to go get a pen and paper, then do that. Pause it so you can write these down so that you can take time to think about it. What, number one, what can I use more of in my life? Number two, what can I use less of in my life? Number three, what characteristics or values would I I like to exemplify in my life? Number four, how do I feel at the end of the day? And number five, how do I want to feel at the end of the day? If you see, we're using I phrases here because this is all about you. It is not about everybody else adapting to you. It is not about everybody else adapting to the environment. It's not about everybody else um, is the problem and, and the solution. No, 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 no. We're putting the power back in our own hands and we're looking at ourselves. So we're using I statements here. Number one, again, what can I use more of in my life? Number two, what can I use less of in my life? Number three, what characteristics or values would I like to exemplify in my life? Number four, how do I feel at the end of the day? And number five, how do I want to feel at the end of the day? Identify these areas that you need to change, shift, or adjust in. And then once you do that by answering those questions, Choose one area at a time and begin working on that first. Rome was not built in a day. And so you may list a whole bunch of things when you answer those questions. But trying to tackle all of them at once is the same as trying to tackle every chore in your house at one time. Nothing's going to get done because you're one person. And you cannot try to stretch yourself that thin to tackle everything at one at, um, at the same time. So what do you do? You stop making a mountain out of a molehill and you break it down brick by brick, layer by layer, step by step. You only focus on one that you can start changing on that particular day and then work on that one that day. And then maybe the next day you'll increase or the next week. If, it, if maybe you failed that first day, then don't go add the second thing. The next day, work on it. You know, I learned this uh, for example purposes. Um, You know, if I give my example, I'll give you the the third part of this, which is remember your why in the process. So number one is identify the areas you need to change, shift, or adjust in. And I gave you questions to think about and write down. Number two, choose one area at a time and begin working on that first. And then number three, remember your why in the process. Because it's so easy to get caught up in the minutiae or the agenda of everything that has to get done or everything you put on your list that you want to work on, that you want to adapt in, that you want to shift your life in uh, in a better direction so that you can receive that elevation, that, that prayer, that end goal that you require and desire for your life. And so we'll get caught up in, in everything. But when you break it down and, and then, like I said, focus on your why, that's going to help you to move forward. That's going to help you to also stay the course because in you starting to change, you're going to feel like giving up. I'm going to tell you, be honest. You're going to feel like giving up, but you can't. That's why you focus on a why and your why should not be external based on other people. It should be internal because you have taken time to reflect on you and get your vision in order of where you want to see your life go, how you want to see your life become better. It is not about the environment changing. It's not about the people changing. It's about you changing and working on yourself. And so remembering your why in the process is going to help you as you move forward. And so last example before I go, um, because I know we are like so over time. Um, You know, I remember when I first started my journey in working out, this was an... um, well, I'll, I'll say my consistent journey working out was in August 2023, but that wasn't like the first time I started working out. And so just to stay focused on this, August 2023, when I first started working out, 
I had to find a why to keep me going. And my why was and still is all about being active every day. And so that's why I get up every day and I work out because I want to be more active in my life. I want to see more physical activity in my life. And so I get up and I work out every day. Now, if you are new to this podcast, you may say, well, I don't understand as people, people that know who have been following this podcast. Um, I have, I went through a very sick season. That was part of my job within the season. I was very sick, bed bound back and forth from the hospital. So for me, it was about becoming active was my focus of health. I had done the, the practical steps of taking the medication and getting the treatments and the surgeries and all that stuff. So it was like, okay, now what can I do to be more proactive and staying healthy? I know I've spent years bed bound and back and forth to the hospital. So now I need to get my muscle tension back. Now I need to get moving again. So I started my working out progress or process rather for the sole purpose of being active and staying active. And that's been my focus. That's my why. And so there are some days when I don't feel like going to the gym, especially because I get up and go to the gym about 3, 3 30 in the morning because the gym opens at five and it's a little bit of a drive from my house. Cause I choose to go to this particular gym. And so, um, you know, sometimes, especially now that we're in the winter time where I live, I don't want to get up <laughs> at three o'clock in the morning. Cause it is 30 degrees outside. It is 20 degrees outside on some days. I don't want to be in that cold, but I focus on my why. I remember why I'm doing it and I do, and I get up and I do it. And every day when I work out, it's not the same as the day before. Some days I may do 10 minutes that day. Other days I may do a whole hour or two hours. It just depends. Some exercises I do when I get to the gym and others I don't. It depends on me because I'm breaking it down. And I focus on the areas that I want to focus on that day. I don't look at the entire gym and all the equipment and say, wow, I got to get through all this equipment in one day. No, that doesn't make sense. So I break it down bit by bit and now that I've been going for months I have been able to at least at one side of the gym because it's a big gym one side of the gym I've been able to get through almost every equipment on that side of the gym but there's still another whole side of the gym I have never been in before so when I get to the point that I'm ready to elevate to that level because over that side is a lot of weight training then um or a lot more intense weight training I would say because there's weight training where I'm where I work exercise at. So then I'll get to that level. But for right now, I break it down to what I can tackle and handle this day. And I work on what I can do today. And so you got to do the same. You got to be willing to adapt, to shift, to change, to learn something new in order to grow, develop, elevate, become who you want to be. It's all required, but it starts with you first And you got to clear away the cobwebs, take off the rose colored glasses, take off the tainted vision or, or work on that distorted vision that you have of thinking it's everybody else. And you got to start focusing, pointing at yourself. You do that by working on the man or the woman in the mirror. And I promise you, as you begin to work on you and focus solely on you and then move forward one day at a time. And begin to adapt. You will eventually get to that elevation that you desire. But it all starts with adaptation first. I bring in that to flow. And I promise you'll see change in your life. All right, y'all. We got to (laughs) go. So may the Lord bless you and keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. May the Lord God be gracious to you. Show you his favor and give his shalom. Give his peace. Take care. Love you guys. Bye now.